A new era has dawned, offering a blank canvas painted with warmth and peace. Individuals now have the choice to live in serenity or strife, prosperity or rivalry. They can face each other as enemies or unite as brothers. However, a storm is brewing, and soon it will become clear that even in this new era, there is always something worth fighting for. After liberating the hourglass and becoming the keeper of time, the task of restarting history began. With humility and restraint, this blank canvas was approached. Careful preparation led to painting over the darkness, sketching out the realms, and brushing them with life. In this new era, all beings have the opportunity to find peace, but it is their responsibility to do so. The power only permits the beginning of this endeavor, it is the duty of mortals to finish it. A miracle cure of unrivaled potency has been discovered and will soon be available in every home in Outworld. This elixir, crafted from an ancient recipe, contains various exotic ingredients infused with powerful magic. In a nearby village, all diseases have reportedly disappeared overnight after using this cure. While the potency of this magic makes it expensive, the question posed is whether one can afford to be without it. A confrontation occurs between a seller of elixirs and a grieving customer. The customer accuses the seller of fraud, claiming that despite promises and payment, his daughter died after taking the elixir. The seller insists that his magic could not have failed, but the customer reveals that an imperial mage declared the elixir to be nothing more than tea. The seller's true identity is revealed to be Shang Tsung, and he is offered an opportunity for greater power by a mysterious figure. At Madame Bo's establishment, Kung Lao and Raiden enjoy dinner while discussing their martial arts training. Their meal is interrupted by the arrival of the Lin Kuei, who demand protection money from Madame Bo. A fight ensues, with Kung Lao and Raiden defending Madame Bo against the intruders. The battle showcases their fighting skills and teamwork. After the fight, it is revealed that the entire scenario was a test orchestrated by Lord Liu Kang, the god of fire and protector of Earthrealm. Liu Kang explains the concept of realms and the importance of the upcoming Grand Martial Arts Tournament between Earthrealm and Outworld. He invites Kung Lao and Raiden to join Earthrealm's champions and continue their training at the Wuxi Academy. The scene shifts to an adventure involving Johnny Cage and his wife Chris. They navigate through a treacherous temple filled with traps and puzzles in search of a valuable artifact. Their journey is fraught with danger, including poison darts, liquid mercury floors, and hostile guardians. Despite the challenges, they successfully retrieve the artifact, demonstrating their skills and teamwork. The adventure is revealed to be a movie scene, with Johnny Cage as the star. However, the glory is short-lived as Johnny faces financial troubles and marital problems. His wife Chris confronts him about their dire financial situation and his extravagant spending habits. Their argument is interrupted by an intruder, Kenshi Takahashi, who claims to be a descendant of the Taira clan and demands Johnny's sword, Sento. The confrontation between Johnny Cage and Kenshi Takahashi is interrupted by the arrival of Liu Kang and his companions. Liu Kang reveals himself as the god of fire and protector of Earthrealm, offering both Johnny and Kenshi a chance to join Earthrealm's champions. Despite initial skepticism, a display of supernatural powers convinces them of the gravity of the situation. The scene opens with a discussion about Sub-Zero and the need to see Outworld's monsters and magic. A character mentions that Liu Kang said this experience would change their life's arc. There's tension among the group, with some motivated by personal reasons like retrieving a sword. Raiden emphasizes they are there to fight for Earthrealm, not among themselves. It's revealed that one of them will be chosen to fight for Earthrealm in an upcoming tournament. The conversation turns to the tournament's rules and history. Outworld, as the host realm, 
has the advantage of fielding several champions. The competition between Earthrealm and Outworld has been evenly matched historically, but Outworld is gaining strength. There's concern that if Outworld wins, its more militant factions will be emboldened. Raiden expresses admiration for Outworld's knowledge, wealth, and beauty, but notes the differing goals and beliefs between the realms. He stresses the importance of Earthrealm, showing strength to maintain peaceful coexistence. The selection process for Earthrealm's champion begins. Raiden steps forward first and faces Johnny Cage in combat. The fight scene is briefly described, with Johnny Cage boasting about his global martial arts icon status. After Raiden's victory, Kei Takahashi is the next to face him. Raiden acknowledges his own inexperience, but emphasizes his heart in the fight. The selection process continues with multiple rounds of combat. The final match to determine Earthrealm's champion is between Raiden and Kung Lao. Both choose to fight, understanding the grave duty it entails. The match is intense, with Kung Lao noting that Raiden has never beaten him before. However, Raiden emerges victorious, surprising Kung Lao. Liu Kang congratulates Raiden and presents him with an amulet forged by the Elder Gods, granting power over lightning and thunder. The amulet is described as necessary to level the playing field against Outworld's magic-wielding champions. Liu Kang assures Raiden that no tournament participant has ever been grievously injured or killed, emphasizing he would never knowingly send champions into mortal combat. The group prepares to leave for Outworld's capital Sundor in seven days. The tournament will be held at Empress Sindel's palace. Liu Kang warns about the alien and intoxicating nature of Outworld, advising Raiden to stay focused on the task at hand. The scene shifts to Outworld, where Earthrealm's representatives arrive. They meet Empress Sindel's daughters, Princesses Melina and Katana. Johnny Cage is warned to show respect, not unwanted attention. The group is introduced to various Outworld beings, including Centurions, Shokans, and Motnods. There's tension between Princess Melina and Lai, the first constable, revealing political undercurrents in Outworld. General Shao arrives displaying hostility towards Earthrealm's representatives. He underestimates Raiden, but is warned not to do so. Empress Sindel welcomes the guests, honoring her late husband Jared's legacy and the tournament he founded with Liu Kang. Raiden is introduced as Earthrealm's champion, and the first match is announced between him and Li Mei, Outworld's first constable. Raiden wins his first match. General Shao then chooses Reiko, his second in command, as the next Outworld competitor. Reiko's background as a war orphan turned perfect soldier is revealed. The day's events conclude, and all are invited to the evening's banquet. At the banquet, various interactions occur, including a tense exchange between General Shao and Empress Sindel regarding a prophecy about Liu Kang conquering Outworld. A private conversation reveals that Princess Melina is ill and must be replaced by Katana in the tournament to keep her condition secret. The next day, Raiden faces and defeats Katana. In the final match, Raiden confronts General Shao, who is introduced with an impressive list of military accomplishments. Raiden emerges victorious in the final match, winning the tournament for Earthrealm. This victory is celebrated as a means to keep Outworld's aggressive factions at bay. Liu Kang and Raiden prepare to return to Earthrealm, having exceeded expectations. A mysterious figure named Garrus appears, observing Liu Kang's actions through an hourglass, hinting at larger cosmic implications. The Protector reflects on their role, expressing relief at no longer being the Keeper of Time. They are grateful that someone else volunteered to safeguard the hourglass, allowing the new era to unfold as intended. The Protector created a being in their own image, driven by duty. A concern is raised about potential trouble with the hourglass, specifically regarding Shang Tsung defying his destined fate. Shang Tsung has escaped his predetermined destiny and is becoming a powerful sorcerer. He has infiltrated Sindel's court, potentially compromising the vision of peace. The Protector requests further investigation and monitoring of the hourglass. A mission is planned to find Shang Tsung in Outworld, and bring him for questioning. Caution is advised, 
as Shang Tsung is described as a master of deceit. A covert mission to Outworld is organized without Empress Sindel's knowledge. The chosen operative is given a talisman attuned to Shang Tsung's chi to aid in tracking him. The mission's secrecy is emphasized to avoid detection. The scene shifts to two characters discussing their journey, with one complaining about the walk, while the other reminds them of the mission's potential dangers. The characters observe a group of beings, with one mentioning potential cosplay opportunities. They spot Shang Tsung among the group, extracting bone marrow from someone. A debate ensues about whether to intervene immediately or wait. Despite initial hesitation, they decide to act and save Shang Tsung from a potentially fatal situation, explaining that Liu Kang, Earthrealm's protector, wants to question him. The group encounters victims of Tarut, a debilitating disease that eventually turns its victims into bloodthirsty monsters. They learn that Shang Tsung has been regularly harvesting bone marrow from these victims. In exchange for their release, the Tarut victims agree to help capture Shang Tsung. The group proceeds to investigate Shang Tsung's nearby laboratory. Inside the laboratory, they discover Shang Tsung preparing a potent serum made from Tarut-infected bone marrow. They intervene to stop him from administering it to Melina, leading to a confrontation. Shang Tsung claims he is trying to protect Melina, not infect her, but the group remains skeptical. The situation escalates as Melina appears to be in distress. A chaotic scene unfolds as the group tries to protect Melina while Shang Tsung insists on administering more serum. Goro arrives and misinterprets the situation, believing the Earth Realm representatives are there to disrupt Melina's treatment. This leads to increased tensions between Earth Realm and Outworld, with some pushing for immediate action against Earth Realm. Shang Tsung manipulates the situation using the Earth Realm representative's presence to support claims of an inevitable conflict between realms. He suggests to Rain that he could potentially replace Sindel as Outworld's leader if she resists the idea of conflict. A mysterious benefactor is mentioned who desires war between the realms to facilitate conquest. The scene shifts to a hidden laboratory beneath the false front. The environment is described as reminiscent of a horror film. They encounter a jailer who has been enslaved by Shang Tsung through threats to his family. It's revealed that Shang Tsung has been studying the jailer's unique shape-shifting abilities. The group manages to escape, but the jailer, Saizo, begs to be killed, fearing Shang Tsung's retribution against his family. Shang Tsung appears and reveals he had killed Saizo's family long ago. As they attempt to capture Shang Tsung, he escapes, leaving them trapped in a room filling with gas. They seek an escape route, debate leaving behind an injured member, but ultimately decide to stay together. The group escapes into a living forest where trees house the souls of the dead. They learn more about Saizo's past and how Shang Tsung coerced him into servitude. Saizo hints at a conspiracy involving Shang Tsung and other powerful figures but can't provide full details. The journey is interrupted by an encounter with someone who initially mistakes them for demons. Ashra, a demon from the Nether Realm, reveals her backstory to the group. She explains that she has purged most of the evil from her soul in an attempt to become more human. Ashra was formerly part of Quan Chi's Sisterhood of Shadow, but renounced him when she realized his evil intentions. Quan Chi, her former master, now wants her dead and has sent demons after her. Ashra informs the group that Quan Chi is building devices to steal souls on a massive scale, testing them on the dead in the forest. She suspects this is to aid another sorcerer named Shang Tsung. Despite initial hesitation, the group decides to follow Ashra to confront Quan Chi. Ashra elaborates on her journey towards purification, explaining that she saw a better way to live after witnessing Earth Realm and Outworld. Her change of heart angered her sister demons, who began hunting her. She clarifies that Quan Chi is an Outworlder who mastered dark magic for travel to the Nether Realm. Ashra reveals that Quan Chi and Shang Tsung share a common benefactor, a powerful sorceress who taught them everything they know. 
As they approach Quan Chi's location, they overhear a conversation involving several characters discussing a plot against Earth Realm and Order Realm. The group learns of the grave danger facing Earth Realm. A single soul stealer can kill hundreds of thousands, and multiple devices could result in millions of deaths. They decide to confront Quan Chi and his allies immediately. One character reluctantly surrenders their sword to another, acknowledging a life debt. The confrontation begins, with Ashra directly challenging Quan Chi about his soul-stealing activities. After the battle, the group discusses their next move. They decide to take a captured enemy back to Earth Realm for questioning. One character, Baraka, is invited to join them in Earth Realm. Meanwhile, Shang Tsung receives a report on the progress of the Soul Stealers and a plan to break the Lin Kuei away from Liu Kang. Shang Tsung is pleased with the developments, indicating that his plans are proceeding as desired. The scene shifts to a new location where Earthrealm intruders are being sought. A princess is instructed to fetch water, leading to a discussion about forbidden entanglements and the rules of ascension to Empress. The group attempts to move their captive without attracting attention, using a diversion to evade soldiers and constables. Their plan is complicated when a general recognizes one of them, leading to a brief confrontation. A chase ensues, with the group narrowly escaping their pursuers. They return to their base, where Liu Kang greets them. The group introduces new members, Ashra and Saizoth, and reports on their encounter with Shang Tsung. Liu Kang expresses concern about the alliance between Shang Tsung and Quan Chi, stating that this should not have been possible given his rewriting of history. He suspects interference from an unknown entity with the power to obscure their identity from the hourglass. Liu Kang briefs the group on Shang Tsung's location at the ruins of Ying Fortress and the ongoing construction of Soul Stealers. He orders the destruction of the devices and the capture of Shang Tsung. A debate ensues about who should participate in the mission, with some tension arising between different factions. The scene then shifts to the fortress, where Quan Chi is overseeing the production of the Soul Stealers. As the Lin Kuei approach the fortress, Shang Tsung attempts to sway them to his side, promising power and freedom from Liu Kang's control. He reveals knowledge of their past and offers them a place among kings. The Lin Kuei are conflicted, with some tempted by the offer and others insisting on their duty. Shang Tsung then reveals the true purpose of the Soul Stealers, connecting them to the history of Emperor Ying and his Dragon Maw Fortress. The passage describes animated beings powered by soul fragments, fighting relentlessly without remorse or pity. Someone is given command of battalions, suggesting a military context. There's mention of betrayal and abandonment of principles, hinting at a complex conflict involving loyalty and moral choices. A revelation about letting a father die is made, exposing a lie and suggesting a power struggle. The speaker justifies this action as necessary for achieving greatness, implying a ruthless pursuit of ambition at the expense of family ties and ethical considerations. A betrayal is revealed, putting everyone in danger. The betrayer, Bahan, has abandoned reason and forsaken their realm. This treachery stems from deep-seated frustrations that have led to corruption. The loyal ones vow to stop the spread of this corruption, emphasizing their brotherhood despite not sharing blood. A confrontation occurs where loyalty to principles is pitted against blind obedience. Some refuse to sacrifice their values to serve another's ambition. This conflict highlights the tension between duty and personal ethics in a high-stakes situation. A fight ensues, with one character claiming it as their own. There's discussion about loyalty and the potential for a new leadership. The situation is complex, involving corruption and the need to honor a legacy while serving their realm. A decision is made not to leave someone behind who could aid an enemy. A sorcerer arrives, bringing crucial information about time crystals from another timeline. This revelation challenges the understanding of timeline mechanics, 
suggesting the unprecedented existence of two concurrent timelines. This discovery raises questions about the identity and motives of a mysterious benefactor from this alternate timeline. The existence of a second, simultaneous timeline is confirmed, a phenomenon never before encountered. This revelation is linked to Shang Tsung's benefactor, whose identity and purpose remain unknown. The situation is complicated by an ongoing attack, prompting plans to convince Sindel to withdraw from Earthrealm by revealing manipulations of history. A mission to see the Empress is initiated to halt an attack on Earth. The situation involves deception by Shang Tsung and General Sha, who are attempting to steal the throne. A secret about Princess Kitana's affliction with Tarkat disease is revealed, explaining the Empress's trust in Shang Tsung, who provided treatment. The depth of Shang Tsung's manipulation is revealed, having exploited General Sha's vanity and prejudices to incite treasonous actions. The situation is dire, with limited forces to defend against the impending threat. A call for aid is made as the conflict escalates. Tension rises as Liu Kang is ordered to return to the portal gate. Loyalties are tested as some refuse to support the plot to usurp the throne. A confrontation seems imminent, with characters preparing for combat to defend their beliefs and protect the Empress. A standoff occurs as characters are surrounded. Liu Kang, identified as Earth Realm's protector, prepares for combat alongside allies. The situation escalates as they face opposition from those loyal to the current regime. A tense encounter unfolds as characters attempt to pass and warn of the plot against the Empress. Past loyalties and vows are invoked to gain trust and support. The stakes are high, with the future of the Empire hanging in the balance. An emotional confrontation between Sindel and Li Mei reveals past grievances and broken trust. Despite the tension, there's an attempt to overcome anger and grief to address the current threat. The princess's condition adds urgency to the situation. The Empress expresses gratitude for her safety, but remains skeptical of Liu Kang's intentions. Liu Kang reveals his suspicions about Shang Tsung and offers to provide proof of a conspiracy threatening both realms. A high-stakes agreement is made to investigate these claims. Shocking revelations about Shang Tsung and General Sha's true nature come to light. Liu Kang reveals his past as a titan and keeper of time, explaining his role in crafting destinies and restarting history. The concept of multiple timelines and the hourglass's power is introduced. Liu Kang explains how he attempted to create a better timeline by altering key characters' roles and natures. However, an unknown entity has interfered, causing these characters to revert to their villainous tendencies from previous timelines. This interference threatens the stability of the realms. The revelation of Liu Kang's role as creator causes confusion and anger. Accusations of conspiracy and misrule are exchanged. The situation escalates with the appearance of Shinnok's amulet, a powerful and dangerous artifact that shouldn't exist in this timeline. A tense standoff occurs involving Shinnok's amulet. Characters are trapped within the amulet, raising the stakes. Urgent action is needed to save both Earthrealm and those trapped in the amulet. Preparations are made to confront the threat. Soul Stealers are mentioned, indicating a supernatural element to the conflict. Characters split up to neutralize key opponents and shut down the Soul Stealers. Combat ensues as characters face off against loyal lieutenants. There's a focus on protecting each other and overcoming physical challenges during the fight. A surprising turn of events occurs with the appearance of a character thought to be dead now controlling a body created from living forest souls. This adds a new dimension to the conflict and relationships between characters. An emotional reunion takes place, with past relationships and loyalties being reaffirmed. 
the group prepares to face the challenges ahead with a sense of hope and determination. A plan is formed to take the crown and improve their odds against the enemy. Deception is used to distract opponents while positioning for an advantage. The conflict seems to reach a resolution, but the threat of an unknown benefactor remains. The identity of this mysterious figure, Kronika, is revealed, setting the stage for future confrontations and challenges. A sorcerer reveals himself to be a version of Liu Kang from another timeline where he was victorious. He explains that their battle for the hourglass ripped apart time, creating two timelines. The sorcerer infiltrated this timeline, elevated certain individuals, and assembled a dragon army. His true intention is to exterminate all life in this timeline and merge it into his own. The revelation leads to a conflict between the sorcerer and his former allies, who feel betrayed by his deception. A battle ensues between the sorcerer and his opponents. During the fight, a mother figure is fatally wounded. In her final moments, she passes on her role as emperor to her child. The father figure collects the mother's soul, claiming it is now safe within him. The group is forced to withdraw from the battle. The heroes discuss their next move, realizing the sorcerer needs multiple portals to move his large army. They decide to follow the enemy to find the portal nexus. A debate arises about seeking allies from other timelines to match the sorcerer's strength. Gus reveals he has stored Liu Kang's former power as Keeper of Time, which could potentially be restored to aid in the fight. The group plans to retrieve Liu Kang's stored power from a Jade Jaguar at the Fire Temple. Meanwhile, the Sorcerer orders his forces to focus on finding Liu Kang, viewing him as the primary threat. Gus explains his loyalty to Liu Kang's vision and his decision not to take the power for himself. They discuss the uncertainties of the power restoration process and the possibility of finding allies in other timelines. The heroes devise a plan to divide their forces. Some will use magic to attack the portals, while others confront the dragon army and their dark doubles. They hope defeating the dark doubles will throw the dragon warriors into disarray. The battle begins, with the heroes working to close the portals and trap the army. Liu Kang finds himself in a different timeline, meeting another version of himself, who is also a keeper of time. They discuss the existence of multiple timelines, resulting from their battle for Kronika's hourglass. The alternate Liu Kang explains the threat posed by Shang Tsung to all timelines, and the need to gather allies to stop him. Liu Kang successfully gathers allies from other timelines to confront Shang Tsung. A battle ensues to prevent Shang Tsung from destroying Liu Kang's timeline by emptying its hourglass. The heroes manage to save the hourglass and defeat Shang Tsung temporarily, but they realize he will return to threaten all timelines. The heroes from multiple timelines band together to confront Shang Tsung in a final battle. They aim to end the threat he poses to all timelines. Shang Tsung unleashes powerful forces against them, leading to an intense confrontation. The battle reaches its climax with Raiden dealing the final blow to Shang Tsung. With Shang Tsung defeated, the timeline begins to collapse. The heroes from other timelines must return to their own before this one falls apart. The story then shifts to a more lighthearted scene, where Johnny Cage discusses turning their adventures into a film, offering cameo roles to his friends. The heroes decline, citing various responsibilities and ongoing work in their respective realms. The Earth Realm's guardians are undergoing changes. A new clan called the Sharai Ryu is being established by Kuang to replace a previous one. The speaker expresses the need to assist in this effort and indicates they may call upon others for help in the future. The group shares a meal prepared by Madame Bo, who receives praise for her culinary skills. The speaker acknowledges the group's service as Earth Realm's champions highlighting how their alliance has positively impacted their lives. The gathering concludes with a light-hearted discussion about settling the bill for the meal. There's playful banter about who should pay, 
with mentions of financial situations and business write-offs. The Shaolin, known for their modest lifestyle, are jokingly suggested as potential payers. The exchange ends with assurance that the bill will be covered, possibly as a business expense. The scene conveys a sense of camaraderie and humor among the group, suggesting their strong bond beyond their roles as realm protectors.